Okay, can everyone hear me in the back? Okay, good afternoon everyone. So my name is Rian Griffith. Today I'm here to talk a little bit about our workload generation toolkit range, which is what we're using to drive the load in the demo you're going to see today. So the outline today is just going to give you a brief overview of RAIN, what it does, where it came from. And then I'm going to just give you a bird's eye view of some of the main features that we show for when we were designing the toolkit. And then I'll describe its role in the demo and then quickly wrap up so we can start the demo and go off to lunch. So in the big picture diagram, RAIN is the, the piece at the top in the blue. And it's going to be generating the workload that you're going to see to, directed towards the undergrad apps. So the overview for RAIN, RAIN basically came as a result of a lot of the work we were doing on dynamic resource management. We had these two projects called the director. One was the web app director. This was just focused on scaling the stateless web application tier. And then we had the SCAD storage director. But to be able to convince ourselves and others that the director actually works, we need to have more sophisticated kinds of workloads. So again, because we're doing things in the cloud, peak performance is still important. But we also want to be able to, to show that the, the director can actually handle a lot of the variation of the workload. It's a transition between workload regimes that's really important. So in the work that we were doing, we kind of identified three classes of workload variations that we wanted to, to combine when we were evaluating our director framework. So the first one is the one you're probably most familiar with, and this will be variations in just the amount of workload. So you can think of things like diurnal patterns or simple ranks where just the aggregate number of requests per second changes over time. The other component is the whole notion of mix. So you may be, you may be thinking of things like read-heavy workloads versus write-heavy workloads. Whereas the director has to be able to do the right thing in each of those regimes, we also need the director to do the right thing as we transition between those regimes. And the last one, which is more specific to things like stateful systems, would be that of data popularity. So in a nutshell, not all data is equally interesting. And you want to be able to combine, in some of your experiments, this whole notion of skewed access patterns. At the time, we didn't have, we looked around at what existing tools were available. And the problem we ran into is one of flexibility. And the reason why we didn't find tools that kind of match the flexibility things, of flexibility characteristics that we wanted is that a lot of the tools that we use to evaluate systems are based on performance benchmarks. So performance benchmarks, they're always measuring just peak performance. But for our purposes, we need, that is still important, but we still want to be able to have these fluctuations. And a lot of the tools that some of you may be familiar with are open source tools. So we did at first try to retrofit some of the flexibility and some of the features we wanted onto a number of these toolkits. And one of the big takeaways, at least the lessons we learned, is that the architecture of the tool actually influences the extent to which you can actually add these features. Because we did, for example, for a time, use Fabian. And Fabian, it was easy to do. It's open source. You could do the, the, the peak performance benchmarks. We added variable load. We tried to add you know, variable mixes. We also tried to add variable popularity. And a lot of the architectural choices made in developing Fabian just made that difficult. So hence, that's why we developed Rain. So the main feature, we had a long list of features. Peter is very demanding in terms of how we, how we evaluate the director. And the main feature for us was flexibility. And to be more specific, since flexibility is kind of a very vague and amorphous term, here's specifically what we were looking for. We wanted to support non-stationary workloads, so many things can vary with time, whether it's the amount of load, the reads versus writes, and so on. We want to be also be able to support the full spectrum of, of load generation. So a lot of the performance tools, for example, operate strictly in closed loop mode, where you issue a request, you wait for the response, and then you issue another request. That's not exactly as realistic as we'd like. The other, the other side of the spectrum is completely open to workload generation where you just fire and forget. And again, that's not as realistic either. So the, the point of reality actually is someplace in the middle where you want to have some requests that you can kind of simulate the closed loop behavior and another set of requests that you can simulate the asynchronous behavior. Another thing that came up in our discussion of what the tool should do is, yes, we want to benchmark a single system. But since in the director and the, the context of managing the data center, we're going to run multiple applications. We also thought there would be a need for us to be able to, to construct workloads that were based on aggregations. So you want to have multiple, what we call the abstraction of a track, where a track targets a specific target. We can construct a workload that has multiple tracks, thereby creating a more aggregated workload flow, a workload experiment. And the last two things on the list, we really wanted something that was lightweight, easy to extend, easy to build upon. Because the, the end goal for us was if we want to target a new system, we don't want to have to rewrite all of the plumbing and all of the common pieces. We just want to be able to get started pretty quickly. And lastly, we really want to have systems where we can just continue to add drivers, target new systems. Because for a lot of the, the previous tools we've seen, they're very specific to the type of system that they targeted originally in the performance benchmark space. 
So just to give you an overview of how we actually construct these non-stationary workloads, you can think of taking a benchmark run and dividing it into this abstraction of an interval, where an interval is a simple triple. Main components are you say how long you want the interval to run for, you give some notion of the activity level in terms of threads, number of emulated users, number of emulated clients, and then you have the notion of a behavior hint. Where a behavior hint can be expressed as something like a mixed matrix, so here's an example of the matrix that we're using for scatter, where we have some notion of reads versus writes or some, some covering that, those dimensions. You can be as specific or as general as you want with respect to your behavioral hints because only your generator needs to understand them. In terms of being able to support the full spectrum of load generation, the main thing here is to be able to separate your request generation from the request execution. That allows you to create a request of all the information that needs to be executed and hand it off to any thread. So there's no thread affinity. And that's one of the things that allows us the flexibility to be able to do the open loop load generation as well as the partly open loop load generation, which is something we hadn't seen before in existing tools. And in terms of points of extension, which I'll talk about next, the main thing when you need to target a new system is you need to come up with a generator for it and you need to describe the operations that, will, that are specific to the system you want to target. To achieve that goal, we strove to have a very simple API for creating generators and describing operations. So the generator, if you think about it, at the basic level, you just need to say, tell me what to do next, given what I've done before. And that allows you to do things such as follow things like Markov chains if you need to, but if you don't need to, then you just ignore the previous value and you can just go from there. With respect to operations, again, very generic. Just tell me what to do before I execute, let me do it, and then tell me how I should clean up and how I should write a log in case you want to take the output from rain and replay it in something like HTTP perf. So to kind of give you an example of, and like you kind of judge whether this seems easy or not, in terms of the complexity of the drivers that we created for SCADs and Comrades, they're on the order of a thousand lines of code, where 50% of that is directed to the generator and 50% of the actual operations. So for the system like Scatter, there are only six operations that really matter, visiting the home page, doing the login, creating new user accounts, posting thoughts, creating subscriptions. And the, the thing that's at least encouraging here is that even though this is a thousand lines of code, 50% of that is in the generator. And since we had initially strove to have the generators be very generic, if we actually did a little refactoring, then we could actually cut down the portion of the time or the portion of the code you have to repeat or recreate for your generators. So this is just an overview of what a multi-tenant workload or multi-app workload would look like. So as I said before, we have this abstraction of tracks where every track can target a different system and experience its own kinds of variations and behavior. In today's demo, what we're going to have on the cluster, we're going to deploy multiple instances of rain. They are going to target both scatter and comrades, and we're going to, we're going to, <coughs> sorry, we're going to subject them to a variety of workload variations that are intended to cause both the web tier and the storage tier to scale up and scale down. A rough flight plan would be we're going to start somewhere around the, for each driver instance that we launch, we're going to start somewhere in the realm of 100 requests per second, hundreds of requests per second for the web tier, which will give us something like a couple thousand requests per second in the storage tier. We're going to scale up till we get by an order of magnitude, so we get thousands of requests at the web tier, tens of thousands of requests at the storage tier, and then we're going to scale back down. Before I wrap up, I want to say thanks to all of the contributors. On the initial slide, I mentioned that there are many others. So there are two things I want you to take away from this slide. One, that it's not just an effort that, was, that involved persons inside the RAD, lab, the RAD lab. The persons that I've highlighted in black, in bold, they have contributed either drivers to the framework, patches, bug fixes, features, feature requests. And on the right-hand side, we have the set of drivers that we currently support. And the main takeaway here is that we, we intended the framework to allow you to, to target many different kinds of systems. So we're not just able to build drivers that target web systems. We have drivers that target storage systems. We even have drivers that target MapReduce systems. And this is one of the things that we think would make it at least useful, or we'd hope that it would make it useful for other people to build on top of to do their kinds of evaluations. The, uh, <coughs> sorry, the drivers that I've highlighted in blue, they are the demo apps that we're going to demonstrate today. And like I said, we have a long list. We have contributors from VMware, Georgia Tech. There's a guy at John Hopkins University using it as well. And one of the things I was able to confirm recently is that RAIN is now part of the VMWare benchmark. So we didn't really know this before, but it's part and parcel of that virtualization benchmark that was released a few months ago. So overall, 
The reason why RAIN was developed is because we wanted to do these more sophisticated experiments to evaluate how well the director is able to handle not just peak performance or delivering peak performance, but being able to manage the variations in the workload that we think were important if we want to be convincing that we can actually do this scale up and scale down automatically for both web and storage systems. In that vein, I just want to wrap up by saying we've Open source RAIN has been on GitHub for a while. You can go download it. You can try it out. You can send us feedback. Contribute drivers if you like. We, you know, we really appreciate that. And with that, thank you very much.